What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of my weekly Russell Wilson review. Today, I will be going over his performance against the Houston Texans. Now, this game, if they had pulled through, would have firmly put them in the wild card picture. Unfortunately, they couldn't pull it through, and their playoff chances took a big hit after this game. And a large part of that has to do with Russell Wilson. And it's very unfortunate that he had this bad of a game after a string of pretty good or decent ones, wherever you want to view it. But just the fact of the matter is he did not make enough plays and he left too many plays out on the field for them to be able to come over that massive turnover deficit. So going over the first play here, just to preface this, going into this matchup, the Texans called quarters more than any other team in the league. And the Denver Broncos and Sean Payton came in knowing that, so they put a big emphasis on isolating one of those two high safeties in this quarter scheme. And they got that here on their second play of scrimmage. So the design, I know this play as heat, which is what Kyle Shanahan calls it in his offense. And it's run all over the league. Ever since quarters have started to take the league by storm, this is one of the key plays and getting a chunk play out of that quarters defense and what it's just going to be is it's going to be either a deep swirl or a deep curl route from this receiver here and in this case Judy and what he's going to do is he's just going to influence that safety he's going to right off the snap he's going to run at that safety and get his attention and what that's going to do is that safety is going to come down to play that curl and Sutton is just going to run a big post right behind it. And that's what ends up happening. They have the look they want. Unfortunately, Sutton just couldn't hold on to it. This would have been a huge play and just completely started the game in a perfect way for the Broncos. Unfortunately, Sutton couldn't come down with it. And it's really frustrating because this is a perfect call, a perfect look, and even more so, a perfect throw. You can see as soon as Russ steps up there, Judy has that safety influenced. Sutton's just going to get favorable leverage on his defender and run right by him. Beautiful ball from Russ, and it's just completely dropped. That's really, really frustrating when you kind of take into account the importance of this game and the importance of starting fast against this team. And it's just really disappointing. But they knew what they were getting. They knew what to get to, and when they were in it, they got what they wanted. Unfortunately, the result wasn't what they wanted. Now, this is just another one of those super frustrating, in-structure, rhythmic throws that Russell Wilson just misses. And it's just all over the tape at this point. And it's a play that I've talked about so many times on this channel, and So many times it ends up being the same result. What they're going to get is it's just going to be a choice route from Judy. They're going to bring Sutton down from out wide, bring him into a bunch stack alignment. Judy's going to have a delayed release so that the vertical stems of those receivers next to him can widen out that defense. He's going to come up, run a choice route. He gets favorable leverage. He works outside, and Russ just doesn't get the ball to him. Now, it's... It's just super frustrating because this is as open as you're going to get on choice. See, three-step drop. Judy's still into, he should be into his break already. He took a little bit long getting there, but the pocket is good enough to where you can deal with that. Like, that's okay. Judy breaks out. Russ dropped his eyes to look at the rush. Didn't throw it to Judy. Eyes come back up. Too late for that throw if he'd thrown it probably ends up being behind them for a pick six. It's just, you can't have this. You have to have the ball out on time so that plays like this, these out-of-structure plays that end up being nothing, like here, a sack, you cannot have that. This was a play where they had taken advantage, again, of the aggressive tendencies of these Houston Texans safeties when they're in this quarter structure. They're going to get an out-and-up move by Mims, their fastest playmaker in the receiver room, without a doubt. And it's completely there. It is there for a touchdown. But 
what ends up happening is Russ underthrows it, and he doesn't just underthrow it because he doesn't have the arm for it. He underthrows it because of the timing with him getting his base and getting into his throwing platform. So he sort of rolls out here, and by the time he sets his feet, and by the time he gets the throw off and ends up being behind him, he has to take a huge hitch, which the throw still should be there. It ends up being like a, I want to say 50 yards, 50 air yards throw which still you can put a little bit more on it, but that's still a good throw. Should have been pass interference, but a good throw. There's not even a chance for pass interference. Mims catch this, and he's still running to the end zone. So this was the fourth down play. And you're watching this, and you're probably thinking, good play, Russ. You made something out of nothing, and you converted the fourth down to end up getting points on this drive. And at face value, yeah, it is a good play for him to still be able to get the first down. But the miss he has here is just flat out inexcusable. Like, it cannot happen. So the play call is going to be what Sean Payton calls Z Samurai. And the Z here, which is going to be Judy, he's just going to work a crosser across the field, and the X, which is Sutton, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to run across her across the field. Now, these are the two primary reads on this play. Essentially, you are reading both of them at once, because once you get to the mesh point of those two crossers, you can read the leverage of everybody in that area. So you'll know if you have one or the other. And if you don't have one, you can get to the other. So both of the safeties kind of converge on Sutton. And Judy is alone. And he just, just doesn't get the ball. It It's just so... Fr I can't imagine how frustrated Sean Payton is. So you'll see the look that Russell Wilson has right now. And it's kind of muddy. You know, they're not at their mesh point yet, and you don't know which safety is going to take who. But if you hang in there, and he had the time to hang in there, you'll see as soon as Judy crosses, that far corner comes down to take the flat away from the tight end. The high safety runs with Sutton, and the backside corner of Judy's side initially comes with Sutton as well. And nobody is with Judy at all. But by this point, Russ had already, already made up his mind and ran for a first down, which in a vacuum, again, is a good result, but it could have been so much more on this specific play. So I've highlighted a lot of bad so far, and there's a lot to go through, but this is no lie, one of the greatest throw and catches you will ever see. And I vividly remember myself saying the exact same thing in that Buffalo Bills game where they had that impossible touchdown throw and catch, Russell Wilson and Cortland Sutton. Somehow, they might have topped it here. So, they're just trying to work a simple kind of smash variation. You're going to have Sutton, who's going to be on the deep corner route. And you're going to have Mims, who's going to come across the formation and run that corner underneath of Sutton. And they're just trying to high-low that corner on that side. They end up getting it. And the throw here from Russ and the adjustment that Sutton makes on the ball in the air is just unbelievable. It's one of the greatest catches you will ever see in your life and greatest throws as well. Again, there was a huge emphasis on isolating one of those two high safeties coming into this game, and they did it once again by design on this deep ball to Judy. So you're going to get Sutton, who's going to come up and run the deep post. He's going to influence not only his corner, but that safety as well. You're going to get Judy. He's going to come underneath him and sort of run an out-and-up wheel to the end zone. And it works perfectly. Judy is wide open. Russ does a good job of hanging there and letting it play out and seeing it and delivering the ball. And it sets up a huge play, which let, then goes on to be a one-yard touchdown rush from Russell Wilson. And these, these throws are just beautiful, man. Like, they really are. 
They really are. It's when he's on and he gets into that pretty deep ball, moon ball phase of his game, there are a few things that look prettier on a football field. This was the first, or I'm sorry, the second Derek Stingley interception. And for me, it's kind of hard to really put the blame on anyone here. I mean, yes, Rush should have thrown a better ball, and he probably could have done a better job of putting this more on a line instead of putting as much air on this as he did. So I understand if you want to put this on Russ. But I'm for this one, I'm just going to let you guys decide on this yourselves because this, this is an insane play from Stingley. So they're going to be in their quarters look. So they're just going to get corner, man on, man deep. If he's out and if he's vertical, you have that guy. Same for this corner up here. This guy, you have number two vertical. Safety over here, you have number two vertical. Sorry, this safety has number two vertical as well. And what they're gonna what Russ checks to is actually a really good look against this defense, and they end up getting back to the same sort of structure with it. They're gonna have Sutton just work the middle of the field. Like it's just gonna be a seam route. And it's there. But again, Stingley comes all the way from this backside where he's supposed to fall off and pass off that seam route to the inside safety. No, he falls back, notices the play develop, and he just jumps it all the way down the middle of the field. Like, it's such an insane play for a backside cornerback in cover four to make. It's, it's just insane to me. Again, Russ probably could have done a better job at putting that more on a line and, you know, really firing a tight frozen rope in there. And Stingley probably doesn't have the reaction time to make that play. But it's still such just an amazing play to make from a backside corner in quarters. For me, this is one of those plays where it's hard to really pass out blame here without being in the room and knowing the explanation behind this call. So they're just going to try and work. It's called X or Z dip, uh, depending on who runs the play. And here it's going to be X dip because it's Sutton. He's just going to come up and run at that backer or whoever is taking the middle of the field here. They're in the middle of the field open coverage. So this is the look that they want. So he's going to run at that guy and then just shoot up field. And what you're going to get is you're going to get a defender who has his back towards the quarterback and a receiver who is facing the quarterback who is expecting the ball. And the thought process here is either he's just going to beat his guy or you still have the leverage on that guy, even though you're covered, because as a quarterback, if the defender's back is to you, your guy is wide open because he does not know when or where the ball is going. So on one hand, I understand just trying to get the, the ball to the guy who has been making unbelievable contested catches all season and in this game as well. But I also understand that backside, they're going to have a juke route from Judy. So they're playing too high coverage in the red zone. If that play isn't there, you would like to see Russ work from that primary concept into another route that's working into his line of vision. So that route isn't there. You just move your eyes down a little bit and you can see that this route is working into your vision because that's what a good play caller does. He the secondary routes are working into your line of vision, so you're not reading one side of the field all the way back to another. Again, they're just going to get a juke route from Judy. He's going to come up. He's going to see, okay, I can sit and kind of break out. And then he's just going to work his way right back inside. And he has so much space here that if Russ just comes off of the read and gets it to him on time, this is a walk-in touchdown and they win the game. But again, on the other hand, I understand if the explanation behind this call is to just give your guy a contested opportunity. Neither end up happening. Russ ends up throwing the ball out of bounds. Judy's wide open, and now that screenshot is going to go all over Twitter, and Russ is going to get drilled for it, but that's just the way life goes. This play was just completely doomed from the start like there was no world where this play works because things just get all muddled up pre-snap so what they're in right now is just a bunch set but what ends up happening is they come out of the huddle late 
And Sean Payton in his postgame presser said that there was supposed to be a shift on this play to where they get to a different look. They don't get to that because they come out of the huddle late. And what ends up happening is you have Lucas Kroll, who was signed from the practice squad, who looks like he is the primary read on a play with eight seconds left to win the game. And that's not what was intended to happen here. See, Kroll is just going to come up and I guess he's going to run a dig. You know, he he's not supposed to be in this position and he knows that. So you can see him being confused when there's no shift and when this ball gets snapped to say, OK, now I'm the primary read. I got to make myself available and I can't really fault him for anything here. You know, you would like to see him come back to the ball and fight a little more for it. But all circumstances considered, he did his job. Like, I can't blame him for this. So you're going to get Sutton to the flat, and that's the goal is to sort of open up a window for Kroll in that the back of the end zone. And he doesn't even, there's no chance to get the ball to Kroll on time for this concept because there's pressure immediately. But, again, Russ does a good job of breaking the sack, then just forces the ball to Kroll on a third down where you can live with throwing that ball away on a play that was doomed from the start and getting one last shot at winning this game. You don't have to throw this ball up. You don't have to make this play. Just throw it away, and they end up losing the game on this. It's a horrible interception. You would like to see Kroll fight a little more, but you would like to see Russ throw this ball away even more than that. And it's just super disappointing that not this season ends like this, but they had a chance to come into the playoff part of the season with an 80% chance of making the playoffs if they had won this game, especially because other things had lined up for them prior to this game starting. And for it to end like this, I mean, that's just, that's just brutal.